Welcome viewers. Today on TV Box Stop, I have a special video for you. Today's video is for anyone looking to get into the TV Box business, and it's also an opportunity for my subscribers to get one of the best MLogic S905 X2 TV boxes on the market for $40 or less at factory price. This box is blank, and it's called the Elabao X3. And it is so optimized, it is one of the fastest TV boxes I have ever used. Want to know more? Stay tuned, you have more after this. Welcome back. To add to the suspense, this is how the sample was sent for me directly from the factory with no branding or specifications for my review. However, when it becomes available online, it will have a logo and custom firmware according to the developer's request. So without further ado, let's see what's inside. In the box, you have nothing out of the ordinary. You have the X3 TV box itself. You get this infrared learning remote. It applies the same point-and-click infrared technology, with a mouse cursor controlled by these direction keys, so it doesn't have an air mouse feature. To the back it says that it's a learning remote, which means that you can face it at another remote like your TV remote, and follow the instructions to program it to control your TV also. But if you want mouse-like features to navigate your box, you would have to purchase a Bluetooth Air Mouse or a mini touchpad keyboard separately. You get one HDMI cable. A 5V 2 amps power adapter. And a user's manual. And now a look at its design and what ports we have on this box. Well the body is made of plastic, and because this was sent for me directly from the factory there is no custom branding logo printed to the top. The ones in stores will have either the Elabao logo or whatever other custom brand name according to their order and other special requirements. To the back, you have one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, you have one optical audio SB diff port, one audio video port, and a DC power input. To one side you have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0, and a microSD card reader. There is nothing on the other side. To the front, you have an LED power light. And below the box you have lots of ventilation holes. I will now connect it to my TV and capture card and continue. So I'm connected. And as I boot up for the first time you have an Android animation that loads under 10 seconds, which is the fastest I've seen in a while. This is then followed by a quick startup wizard. Once you have completed the wizard, you are then taken to the launcher. The launcher adopts a different layout, with similar features and appearance to Android TV OS, but it's way much cooler. This launcher starts with the shortcuts bar to the top, where you can add shortcuts by simply clicking on the add button and selecting which apps you would like to add or remove. But there's more. You have the option to rearrange the shortcuts by pressing and holding on any shortcut with the stock remote, or with an air mouse, which then enters into arrange mode. Here you can arrange the order of the shortcuts, as well as add or remove while in this mode. Below the shortcuts is a horizontal panel listing all the apps installed on the box. It also adopts the same rearrange features of the shortcuts bar, with the ability to remove shortcuts. To the top of the launcher there is a Google Voice feature that actually works. I am currently using one of my Bluetooth voice remotes and let's do a simple voice search. Dog training. Here it is. Aaron's school of dog trainant. And there it works. 
To put the icing on the cake, this launcher comes with a navigation bar and status bar for easy navigation and multitasking, a feature that I highly value as a TV Box user, and for all users that navigate their TV Box with a mouse or touchpad keyboard. This is not the only thing pertaining to mouse and touchpad navigation. Most users who navigate with a mouse would know that this launcher layout is usually not 100% compatible with air mouse controllers, and users struggle to use the pointer to select buttons and use the virtual keyboard. That is not the case with this launcher. These features are controlled when using a mouse pointer, and the virtual keyboard responds well to mouse clicks. Now that was quite a lot of info on the launcher, and I give Elabow the thumbs up for a good job at that. Let's see what other cool features they have. In the advanced settings area, they have included the following. 4K display resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision, with the ability to set priority between graphics and video. You have Dolby Digital Sound Output options. And under Device Preferences, you have those cool DTS audio format options we saw in an earlier video. You have a root switch and HDMI CEC control options. In the apps section, they have included the following. The Google Play Store, Chrome browser, the Android TV version of YouTube, app installer, cast play for TV, which I will touch on in a second. You get Amazon Prime Video, Cetus Play for TV, the Airscreen app, root browser, Mobdro, Netflix, Kodi add-ons installer, TV App Store, and TV MC, which is Kodi Media Player. As I normally do, I will now install some apps of my own and continue. So I'm back. And first, I will check to see if alternative launchers work on this box. The ADW Alternative Launcher 2 works fine on this box, with all features working including pop-up app menu options, and drag-and-drop app shortcuts feature. Next, screen rotation does not work on this box, so if you value this feature this is not the box to try it on. I will now show its root information. By default the box is rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. When you turn off the root switch, you have to reboot the box and you will deactivate root access. In rooted mode, don't try to update the super user app as it will put your box into a permanent boot loop that requires a flash of the firmware to fix it. The DRM information shows that you have Google Widevine Level 3, and no HDCP protection. This only allows Netflix to show in standard 480p quality. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Droid Logic, and the model is the GoCast. It comes with 4GB of DDR4 RAM, and 64GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder. The Bluetooth version is 4.1, indicated by the 4 Plus, and I will test it later in the video. The CPU is the Quad-Core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU running up to 1.7 GHz in 32-bit mode. The CPU is the MLogic S905X2, and it is configured with 32-bit ABIs, allowing it to run only 32-bit applications. The display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and open GLES version 3.2 which is really good for gaming. Under network, it shows that the box has dual band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the box is running on Android 9 operating system, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box is running between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius under normal operation, and we will monitor to see how high it increases during treaty gaming. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos, and I will test its Dolby features in a moment. And that's it for system and hardware information, and let's see how it does in the benchmark segment and where it fits on the rankings chart. First, I show the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speeds. 
The results show that the X3 has a RAM copy speed of 3,362 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 79 megabytes per second and a write speed of 76. This is a good score, consistent with other S905 X2 boxes. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results show that on my 60 MB package, the X3 has maximum download speed only on the 5 GHz band. The 2.4 band fell slightly below the maximum speed by 28%. And the LAN port fell way below by 68%. This means for maximum internet speed use the 5 GHz band. In the Antutu benchmark the box got a score of 59,851. And this is a good score for this box, and we will see how it does on the chart. The CPU benchmark shows that the box got a Geekbench 4 score of 745 single core, and 2,122 multi-core. Another good score by the X3, and it's consistent when compared to similar MLogic boxes. The final score is the Ice Storm Extreme and the Slingshot GPU Graphics Benchmark. The Elibau X3 got a score of 5,498 in the Ice Storm Extreme and 525 in the Slingshot Test. These scores are higher than usual and would generate a special note on the chart. So with these results, the Elibau X3 should perform excellent in some Android games which I will try in a moment. But before I get to that, let's see where it placed on my chart. So after updating the scores, the Elibau X3 placed at number 7 in reference to Antutu scores pushing the Magic C N5 Max down to position number 8, and this is pretty good for this box, placing it among the top 10 TV boxes for 2019. More than that, if I adjust the chart in reference to GPU performance, the Elibau X3 is the 5th best gaming TV box on my chart. You can find this chart on my website in full spreadsheet format, where you can interact with it and compare different scores, see the link in the description area. But we're not done yet. I will now put it through some live demonstration and we will see if the scores pan out. Let's go to that now. I will start with Netflix. One of the selling points of this box, is a unique feature they have implemented into a custom build of Netflix called Virtual Button. What this feature simply does, is it allows you to navigate Netflix with the stock remote, which is something they claim is missing from most Netflix builds. While I applaud their efforts in applying this feature, I tested this theory and found it to be true. However, while their version of Netflix work well with the unique feature, you cannot uninstall the app or update it because you will lose the unique feature, and the only way to get it back is to reset the box. With that said, if you use an Air Mouse on their version or on any other Netflix it works fine. Their unique build of Netflix also plays in standard 480p quality due to the lack of required DRM support. Amazon Prime Video comes pre-installed on the box and it works okay. But with my location along with inadequate DRM support, Amazon Prime Video also shows in standard quality. The Android TV version of YouTube also comes pre-installed on the box and it shows in 4K quality. I will now play some 4K video samples.
juries, executioners, judges. Welcome to the inside of your head. The next sound you'll hear is the LFE channel. Most of the samples played okay, with the Cambodia video having some playback issues. I will now test for Dolby Audio and DTS surround sound features. So with all the digital sound settings we saw earlier, this test shows that Dolby Audio and DTS surround sound pass-through actually works. At this point I usually do a test to demonstrate that you can cast content to the box using Miracast. I will shorten that test, only to say that it works well like we have seen in other videos. Instead, I will show another unique feature of this box and that is a remote control app for phones, which allows you to navigate or control the box with your cell phone. The name of the app is Cast Play for TV, and to set it up, you simply have to scan the QR code on the screen with your cell phone and install the APK by downloading it to your phone. Once the app is installed, scan to detect the X3 TV box which will show up here as GoCast, and then proceed to select the various control methods. For my final demonstration, I will test the high scores of the GPU benchmark by playing some high graphic games. I will also be testing the Octopus keymapping application. And they've cut it out. Very weak challenge. Close range shots. Oh! And it's in. And it's a goal for Barcelona. And the score is 1-0. That's great defending there, stopping that attack.
The gaming performance of the X3 is really good, the graphics rendering is smooth and of a high quality. The Octopus Keymapping app works great on this box, and the box does not overheat during gaming. I recommend this box if you like to play Android games on your big screen. In summary, the Elibao X3 is one of the best optimized TV boxes running on the Mlogic S905X2 chipset. The user interface is very fast, one of the fastest among similar models, and it has most of the features required for a great TV box experience. The features that stood out for me is the navigation bar and status bar, the root switch in the settings area, the launcher with the ability to rearrange apps, Dolby Vision, HDR display, DTS audio pass-through, and high-quality 3D gaming with keymapping capability. To identify some cons with this box. The 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band and the LAN port has low bandwidth speeds. Screen rotation does not work. Netflix and Amazon Prime plays in standard quality, and one of my 4K video samples had some playback issues. So this brings to an end my review of the Elibao X3 TV box. If you would like to bulk order with custom branding, then you can't go wrong with this box, you can get them between $25 to $27 a piece. And if you would like to get your hands on just one, or you would like a couple for each room in the house, you can get it for only $40 just as you see it in this video with no branding. For more information, see the link in the description area. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video give it the thumbs up. If you know someone who would like to get into this business then share it with them, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell, to be notified of my next video release, and see you in the next one.